بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد we're continuing in the readings of Aqeel al Safariniyah Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ahmed al Safarini رحمه الله تعالى explained by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin رحمه الله تعالى and of course, this is a book dealing with the Asma wa Sifat of Allah Ta'ala and the Aqeel of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And we are in the first bab from the Fasl, Fi Bahti Sifatihi Ta'ala. And we've been discussing so far the position of Ahl Sunnah with regards to the names of Allah Ta'ala. And now the Shaykh goes on to mention the position of Ahl Sunnah concerning the descriptions or the attributes of Allah Ta'ala as he mentioned them briefly in general earlier on in his introduction and then he begins to mention them ala sabil tafsil in a manner that is more detailed and that is the bait in which he mentions lahu al-hayatu wal-kalam wal-basaru sam'un iradatun wa ilmun wa and that is the bait where he mentions that to Allah Ta'ala belongs al-hayat life that Allah Ta'ala is ever-living. He is Al-Hay, Lahu Al-Hayat, Wal-Kalam, and speech, Wal-Basr, and sight, Sam'un, hearing, Iradatun, a will, Ilmun, knowledge, Waqtadar. And to Allah Ta'ala, He possesses the Qudra and the ability over all things. We've been dealing with the issue of, after mentioning Al-Hayat, the issue of Al-Kalam, the issue of speech. And we stopped in mentioning the position or the statements of the Jahamiya last night. We just briefly mentioned their position in opposition to Ahlul Sunnah of what they say about the Kalam of Allah. And of course that is the, the statement of the Jahamiya and the Mu'tazila and their followers. They say that the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah ta'ala, He speaks, they say He speaks. And his speech can be heard, and he speaks whenever he wills, and in whichever manner he wills. But his speech is not like, I mean, is not a sifa from amongst his sifat. His speech, his kalam, is not a sifa. It is not a description or characteristic from amongst his characteristics. And that, is cre- and that his speech is created. His speech is created. So they believe that the speech is not something that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a sifa of Allah. And it is something that is created. He created, as we mentioned, that their argument, or that they will say, for example, when Allah spoke to Musa, and he called out to Musa from the right side of Mount Tur, they say it was the, and Musa came forward, it was the shajara. That Allah created speech and placed it into the bush, and this was this which this is that which was being relayed to Musa. We said we mentioned two positions of the people who are in opposition of Ahlul Sunnah concerning this. The next group, in summarizing this and not making these arguments too long, because some of these philosophical arguments uh, at sometimes when we have not reached a certain state or we have not covered other books, some of us, then it is no point in mentioning certain things in which maybe you don't have a foundation or you have not covered those texts that may be a little bit more elementary than this. But just briefly mentioning the statements of the Asha'ira, which is another group who are in opposition to Ahlul Sunnah concerning the Sifat of Allah Azza and amongst many other things that they may be in opposition to Ahlul Sunnah with. And do not be fooled by those people who are amongst us today, and they exist even in this city, people who say that we are the real Ahlul Sunnah, the Asha'ira, or the Asharis. We are the real Ahlul Sunnah. Right? We are the people who really are the true people of the Sunnah, wal Jama'ah. This is what they say. Okay, and they are in this city as well. Their position, although many of the people in this city who follow that and who ascribe themselves to it, they really have no clue 
an idea of what it is that they are ascribing themselves to. They're just following it, all right? By whoever they have been impressed with of their speech, of their classes, or whatever they have, or whoever they have been come, come in contact with that are upon this methodology, all right? And if anybody wants to know anything further or, clear, or either more clarification about them, you can see me after the class, and I'll tell you privately where they are, where they frequent, and the names of some of the people they follow. Okay? Inshallah. <laughs> but the Asha'ira, they say that the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sifa, min sifatihi, from his descriptions, it is a characteristic, unlike the Jahmi and Mu'tazila. وَلَيْسَ makhluq, And it is not created. It is not created. But what they say is, that speech in which we affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from amongst his sifat, and that it is not created, that which we affirm for Allah ta'ala of that speech, is something that in actuality it is metaphorical. It is not real speech as we understand speech to be, according to them. It is rather Allah Ta'ala a way and Allah Ta'ala has expressed himself, but it is not real speech like we understand speech to be. This is according to the Asha'ira. They say that the kalam of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala the idafa of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala connecting kalam to himself min bab al-majaz. It is from the category of that which is metaphorical. It is not necessarily literal or real as we understand it to be. Or we understand speech to be. The shaykh goes on, Ibn Thaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, and he says something very important. He's summarizing this. He says, first of all, we refute this statement by way of the legislation and even by the way of the Arabic language. As for, by way of the legislation or the text that has come in the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasaf al-Quran bi annahu kalamullah. Allah has described the Qur'an as being his kalam, right? As being his kalam in more than one place in the Qur'an, right? وَالْأَصْلُ أَنَّ الصِّفَةَ حَقِيقَةٌ فِي مَوْصُوفِهَا And the base rule, when we're talking about a description or characteristic, if we're describing something or someone, that sifa is something that is really, and it really belongs to that person or that thing that is being described with it. It is not something that is considered to be metaphorical. If I describe a brother in this particular way, this is his sifa, this is his characteristic, it really, that is his character, it belongs to him. Right? It belongs to him. Or the Quran has been described as being the kalam of Allah, then it is really the kalam of Allah. It is not considered to be something that is metaphorical, or we have to understand it in a way other than what Allah Ta'ala literally said. It is the command of, it is the kalam of Allah. You understand? As for in the legislation, I mean in the language, there's something that is very clear. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُقَالُ فِي اللُّغَ لِلْكَلَامِ كَلَامٌ حَتَّى يَخْرُجْ بِالْلِسَانِ And kalam is not considered to be kalam in the Arabic language until it, it, it until it comes out from what? Comes out from one's tongue that is speaking, right? And we're not attributing this to Allah Ta'ala, we're mentioning this as example from the Arabic language because they feel like kalam, kalam is just meaning. It is ma'ana al-qa'im bi nafsihi, according to the Asha'ira. The kalam of Allah is al-ma'ana al-qa'im bi nafsihi. It is almost like a person, as we say, when a person, and as they say, he is speaking to himself. Right? He's speaking to himself. And then it becomes expressed in the way that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wills to have it expressed. But it is not like the kalam we understand to be kalam as Allah Ta'ala is literally speaking how we understand it to be. Right? This is what they say. 
They try to utilize as a proof. They try to utilize as a proof the statement of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al-Mujadila. And Allah Ta'ala, he says that they say, وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ لَوْ لَا يُعَذِّبُنَ اللَّهُ بِمَا نَقُولُ وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And they are saying within themselves or to themselves. They are saying to themselves. Why has Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala not punished us for what we have said? Because of what we, have, what we are saying. The Shaykh he says, قُونَ هَذَا رَدٌ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَيْسَ لَكُمْ بَلْ هُوَ دَلِيلٌ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَيْسَ لَكُمْ He says that this is a refutation against you and it is not for you. It is something that is an evidence against you and it is not for you. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَّا أَرَادَ حَدِيثُ النَّفْسِ قَالَ وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ Listen, look at the intelligence of the ulama in utilizing and extracting the refutation from the actual evidences that they use. And this is how Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that never do Ahlul Bid'ah or Ahlul Bid'ah'i, never do they use something as an evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah except for their position, except that it can be used against them to refute the position that they have. This statement here, he says, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he intended, or he intended by this hadith or nafs, meaning the actual speaking to oneself, as we understand that like we're thinking, we have a thought process going on, but there are words going on in our mind. We're having a conversation, right? We're not actually having any words that have sound that can be heard. He says, وَيَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ When he spoke about that hadith or nafs, he said, يَقُولُونَ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And they are saying, فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ They are saying to themselves, when he intended hadith al-lisan, when he intended speech by way of the tongue, he clearly said, bima naqul, clearly. And they are saying to themselves, why haven't Allah punished us? Bima naqul, based upon what we literally have said from our mouths. They can be heard, right? They are saying to themselves, without literally being heard, why has Allah, why has, thinking to themselves rather, why has Allah Ta'ala not punished us? Because of what? Naqul. We are saying literally with our tongues. So he said this is an, a refutation against them. Now, and then there's some other things that they try to utilize, like a line of poetry that they try to utilize to prove their point. And Ibn Thaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that this line of poetry that they use is the line of poetry that was, that was a line of poetry by a Christian. By a Christian. He says about this, he says, because they use this line of poetry by a Christian, he says in actuality, he says, that there's, we cannot use this as dalil. We cannot use this as dalil. Moving on, and we'll stop tonight, bismillah, with regards to kalam. But in our next sitting, we will deal with the issue of al basr the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, لَهُ الْحَيَاةُ وَالْقَلَامُ وَالْبَصَرُ سَمْءٌ إِرَادَةٌ إِلْمٌ وَاقْتَدَرُ So to Allah belongs life, kalam, and al-basr, sight. Okay? Sight. And we'll deal with the issue of sight and how Ahlul Sunnah, how we understand this sifa of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and how it is divided into two different types of basr. And that is Basr al-Ru'ya and Basr al-Ilm. Basr al-Ru'ya and Basr al-Ilm. And that is where we ascribe to Allah Ta'ala the fact that Allah Ta'ala literally sees. He has sight and He sees, right? Literally, that Allah can see everything and see you and see everything in the creation, right? He has Basr, sight in that way. And then Basr al-Ilm, in dealing with the fact that Allah wa ta'ala, He says, Basirun bil ibad. That Allah is Basir bil ibad. Basirul ilm. That Allah ta'ala knows very well every single thing that the servants do. Well acquainted with His knowledge. And He is Basir by way of His knowledge of everything concerning His creation. Right? And these are very important. Descriptions of Allah Ta'ala. To negate these brothers, 
makes it very difficult for a person to really worship Allah Ta'ala ala wajhin sahih in a manner that is correct, in a manner that Allah Ta'ala has intended His servants to worship Him. If you negate sight from Allah, if you negate life from Allah, if you negate kalam from Allah, if you negate hearing from Allah, if you negate the will of Allah, knowledge of Allah, if you negate these very critical and important descriptions of Allah wa Ta'ala, then what, who are you worshipping? Who are you worshipping? These are very important and critical descriptions, very important, important, tremendous descriptions in their nature that are ascribed to the one who we worship, Azza wa Jal. Very important. So the people who negate these, it is very difficult for the people to actually worship Allah in a manner that He deserves to be worshipped, to fear Allah properly, to love Allah properly, to, ex- to extol Allah properly, to elevate Allah Ta'ala properly. His, the greatness of Allah if you remove these descriptions from Allah. What we say is Ahlul Sunnah is very clear to those people because you may come in contact with them. Right? We say that we attribute these things to Allah Ta'ala in the manner that befits Allah. Laysa kemithlihi shay'un. We all need to know this verse. Because they'll come to you and say, how do you give Allah kalam? How do you give Him life? How do you give Him basa? How do you give Him sam? These are attributes or descriptions of human beings of the creation how do you give Allah Ta'ala these things we say clearly Allah says in the Quran Laysa shay'un, that there is nothing unlike Allah Subhanahu nothing resembles Allah nor does Allah resemble anything in his creation whatsoever right this is very clear we'll stop here bi'ithnillahi azawajal hadha wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam